Hi, this is Jonathan Hart, and we are continuing our video series on the factory pattern. So this is where we left off uh, in the last video. Uh, we modified main to take in an input uh, from the user, and then evaluate its input, and uh, create our vehicle, and then we check the vehicle to see if it's null, and if it's null it goes, otherwise give a snide comment, walk. Um, and so if you run the program and you say helicopter it says I'm hovering but if you give it say an invalid input it says walk so the factory pattern is going to relieve the duty of all of this uh, creation logic and uh, put it into another object and the reason why this is a good thing is uh, Methods really should have one and only one thing that they do. Um, they should be as simple as possible, no simpler and no more complicated. Um, so the very notion of a method, this method actually does three things. It gets a user interface, it processes the input, um, and then it does something with the result. Um, so we're going to refactor this so that it doesn't have to worry at all about the vehicle creation. All it has to worry about is taking the input and making the vehicle go. Um, so we're going to do that with a factory and I'm going to combine the strategy pattern in with the factory. Uh, we're going to use algorithms. Um, so first I'm going to create an interface called I vehicle build algorithm or just call it iVehicle build. So we'll say vehicle build. So this method is going to take a string input and return a vehicle to our client. Um, we're also going to have an, uh, an algorithm. Uh, call this vehicle build algorithm and we're going to implement i vehicle build so we'll say public vehicle build and this is going to eventually do something but for build purposes as we continue I put return null and that gives us a successful build message this will eventually do something don't worry so now we're going to build factories and so for our factory objects we're going to create an abstract class and then a derived factory from the abstract so we say public abstract class factory base and the base is going to also implement the same interface as our algorithms you don't necessarily have to do it that way but I prefer to do it that way so in the abstract class um, we will have public oops, vehicle build with your input and this is where the strategy pattern comes in we're going to give ourselves a reference to an i vehicle build object so we say protected i vehicle build and we call that underbar build and so now here again with the strategy pattern we're going to delegate the building responsibility to our build algorithm. We don't actually want to do that within the factory. So we say under bar build dot build, give it input, and say return. Okay. That builds. Okay, now the final step for this, for our abstract class, I'm going to do two constructors. One constructor will default this to a vehicle build algorithm. Uh, the 
other constructor will allow us to parameterize this and receive it and set it. So we'll have our first closed constructor. We'll say factory base. And say build equals new vehicle build algorithm. So that's closed off. So if we just um, don't pass any parameters, uh, it defaults to the vehicle build algorithm. The other constructor is going to take an input of I vehicle build and set our internal build algorithm to that parameter. Okay. Now we've got a good base class for any vehicle factories that we want to build. So let's build one. We'll say public class vehicle factory. And we're going to inherit factory base. Now notice that we've already got our build method in the abstract. We've got um, a constructor here. So that should be good. I don't think we're going to need anything else. But don't hold me to that. We might discover we need something. So now we're going to take this and we're going to refactor this out to our factory algorithm. We're going to come here, and there's a few extra steps we need to take. Um, so I'm going to declare an internal vehicle variable. And then I'm going to return it here at the bottom. So now when um, we create a vehicle factory and we call build, it's going to delegate to our iVehicle build object. Currently we only have one iVehicle build algorithm. And it's going to come in. It's going to declare this variable. Try to set it based on an input. Hopefully the input is valid and return whatever the result is. So in our main class, we're going to rearrange things just a little bit. We're going to get our input and set vehicle. And we're going to do some nifty refactoring tricks here. So we'll put vehicle there. And up here, we're going to declare our factory. It's new vehicle factory. Okay, so we have some warnings. Now this is where we're going to use the factory right here. Instead of setting this to null, we now say factory, build, and give it the input. Now the warnings go away. And so now, notice that the responsibility of creating the object is completely removed from our method. It's done by the factory. And so let's give this a shot and see what happens. We say car. It says, look while I'm driving. So it's working. We'll set a breakpoint just so we can watch it in action. So this time we'll say a jet. And we'll come in. I see it goes straight to the factory base. We have uh, absolutely nothing in our vehicle factory. Everything is declared in the base. Um, we're defaulting to the vehicle build algorithm. So it comes here to the vehicle build algorithm. We declare our vehicle, goes straight to jet, and returns. And we go.
and of course the same thing if if we get a null back it says walk um, in the next video I'm going to uh, take everything a step further so thank you for watching we'll see you in the next video